Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation. Mike Campy, Grow My Cleaning Company here. I have got the lovely Lindsay Sawyer in my virtual room. Uh, she's in her room across the country. I am in my room way over here. I wish you were here, but uh, what are you going to do? Technology. So um, Lindsay has worked her way up in the company she worked for. Um, apparently at age 15, she started working like an insane person. But uh, after a couple of years, uh, she wasn't feeling the job scene anymore. Passion was gone. And she always loved helping people. And she knew the only thing she, or she knew, she felt, she says she knew, but I think she felt the only thing she could do well was clean and manage people who want to learn and grow. Um, she enjoyed cleaning, loved the feeling afterwards. So she started her business captivating cleanliness in 2018. Clients came in fast. She started hiring about a year after, um, which is fantastic. Things were going great until our friend COVID hit and then things went not great, I guess would be the best way. Uh, and business started running out of money. She found our videos and our training. She watched for a while and signed up thinking, hey, it worked for other people. They're neither better looking, smarter, stronger, cooler than I am. Why wouldn't it work for me? Um, Lindsay, say hey to Clean Nation and uh, fix any mistakes I made in your, uh, in your introduction. Talk to us, sister. Hey, Cleaning Nation. Um- you know, well, the only thing I caught was a couple of years working since I was 15. I'm much older than just a couple of years. So I'm in my 30s. <laughs> um, I was 21, 22. I was trying to give you the better, you know, I, with ladies, you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you got everything just about right. Nothing to fix. Just about right. There's a couple of lies in there. Cleaning Nation, you'll have to figure out which was which. <laughs> well, no, just the age part. <laughs> Age. Boy, hey, I make no claims about Lindsay's age. <laughs> um, good, bad, or indifferent. I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. All right. So walk us through, because um, it's. I love sharing your guys' stories. Uh, and by the way, Lindsay's uh, one of our Next Level members, super bright lady. Hopefully, I will be seeing you in person in Phoenix in like three weeks. Oh, you son of a gun. You're making me so... This whole COVID thing. All right. For you, but I guess I'll see you online, which makes the hugging a lot less effective, but we'll... Uh, well, uh, I'll yell at you about that off, off air. All right. So I love having people like Lindsay on because A, she's super real. So there's there's no, pre- no one's going to be like, oh, Lindsay's a super, I mean, she's great, but no one's going to be like, oh, she's this super fancy person that has all these, uh, aside from working at 15 and only being 23, you know, and having all this uh, success, um, she's super accessible. So walk us through, if you can remember, I know it's only been a couple of years, when you were leaving your job, and starting your business. Cause a lot of people listening now, that's where they're at, right? They're like, man, I make money. And maybe I'm assuming my money pays all my bills and I, I've lost my passion. I'm one out, but I'm terrified. How, how'd you deal with that? Um, well, I probably did things a little different. I actually left the job and was jobless for two months trying to figure out what I was going to do. <laughs> um, and just with, you know, really just thinking about, um, you know, what I'm good at, what it is really I want to do, how I can give back to people in our community, um, you know, provide jobs for people even um, kind of came to mind. I've always kind of had that entrepreneur build up, you know, like mindset kind of thing. Um, And I finally just think I got to that point in my career where I just kind of stopped. I lost my passion. I didn't feel like I was doing what I was here to do. Um, So that's when I decided, well, I'm good at cleaning. Maybe I can do that, dabble in it, see what happens and kind of go from there. Um, And that's when I got out there on Facebook, started putting my name out there, started attracting Mm -hmm. clients. um, And before I knew it, I needed help. (laughs) Beautiful. So it took two months to get your first client or two months before you decided on cleaning? Kind of what happened that two months? Just deciding, figuring out, game planning, seeing how much it costs to start my own business, um, what I needed to do legally to get everything in place so I could, you know, start filing properly, um, following the laws, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and then about two months of planning and figuring that all out. That's when I kind of started, you know, put my stuff out there, put my name and number and kind of hoped for the best. And people started contacting me. I had a few friends out there that helped by putting out, you know, like, um, highly recommendation referral, you know, comments and stuff when people were out there in their community Facebook pages looking for people and 
started contacting the people back and it just kind of happened. So did you get your first client from organic social media? Yes. Beautiful. All right. So that's that transition. And it looks like you went from zero to kind of having a full dance card in about a year where you were to the point where like, I can't really take any more without help. Correct. Cool. And then how did that work? So I know having coached a lot of Clean Nation, um, that's scary, right? Probably so oftentimes hiring your first employee can be scarier than, hey, give me a hundred bucks and I'll clean up around here. How'd that, how'd you go from, I need help to, I'm going to have help to, holy crap, I've got an employee that's actually working. <laughs> Um, well, I worked out on the field with her for a while. Um, really got, you know, you head her. into her head. Um, and How did you find her? This is a oh, uh, free posting on Indeed. Just started uh, posting job stuff on Indeed. Cool. She just showed up and you went and worked together and a lot of yeah. history was we made. had a phone interview um, and then she came and met me in person. Um, and then we showed up at a house, started cleaning and just kind of started training her, kept working with her. And probably about after about five or six months, I felt confident enough that, you know, I didn't have to check on her anymore. She was doing everything she needed to do. The clients loved her. Um, and then I just kept finding more help. And we had a lot of employees come and go. Um, you know, I found a lot of people just didn't work out over time. Some people were there for a month or so, and then I had to let them go. So it was probably a good year and a half to two years of her and I working together and then a couple of months here and there where I was off the fields while I had other employees on, on staff. So let me give you, cause again, I'm always listening and I want to hear, I want to give you guys clean nation and gals what I'm hearing. So you don't miss it. Um, just in case you missed it. So, you know, Lindsay's a client. I've got all this coaching. Oh my gosh, it took five or six months before you, you know, let her train on her own and you know, all these things. So we could look, go back at, at Lindsay's story and, and find a thousand things that she or anyone else did wrong, right? No, nothing's ever perfect. But the theme that I'm hearing that I want you guys to get is she just got started, right? Like I'm sure when you're like, I took a couple months to plan, you got to figure the laws, got to figure, I'm sure you did a bunch of stuff that was wrong and you had to figure it out and fix it. And then when in the hiring, I'm sure. To, but the fact that you're just like, well, I need a client. So I just went out to my friends and family and said, Hey, I'm cleaning now. Who wants to, who, want, who wants in? And then when you need something, you're like, I just put up an ad in need. And I'm guessing if you look back at that ad, then now you're like, Oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. It was terrible or whatever the interview process, but you were too dumb to know it wouldn't work. So you just went ahead and were successful. So I love that spirit of you know, it's always good. To, and again, Lindsay's got a really good um, combination of I'm looking for coaching. and I want to get better, which is good. If we just think we know everything and, and don't need help, that's, that's a good recipe for success. But she doesn't go until I get the perfect coach with the perfect plan and I know everything in advance is going to happen. I can't start. That's a guaranteed way to success. So I love that kind of tension of I'm going to get better and I want to learn. Like, you know, you took a couple months, you obviously were watching videos or things you were doing to learn, but you didn't let that, you didn't use it as an excuse to do nothing. Is that, was that scary or is that just natural for you? Um, a little natural, a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything that's, that you're good at should be that a little bit of that, like I'm parts of it. I like and other parts I kind of freaked out, but I had to just like be a big girl and get it done. Um, all right. So when did things start kind of, going off the rails, uh, for you guys or for you? Um, I probably noticed it in about January of 2019. Um, you know, just, I was tired of the constant, you know, employees not working out. Um, you know, still having just the one girl I could rely on, wasn't able to really focus on the business too much in the business. Um, yeah, I mean, January 19th was a big, like, I really need to do something or I'm January not. 2019 or January 9th, 2019? 2019. Yeah. Okay. So this is pre COVID. So the cracks were starting to. to oh, sorry. Of... Sorry. Sorry. Uh, 20. 2020. Sorry. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> Again, COVID didn't kind of rear its head fully till like March is when it really kind of kicked butt. So. Right. So January was... 2020 was the big, like, I got to figure something out. I got to do something. What I'm doing isn't working. Um, and then. Yeah. It what was the straw? I mean, you guys. Yeah. But what was, was there a specific, like someone quit or you'd had to, was there a specific thing or were you just done? I was just done dealing with the toxic employees that like, they'd be great. And then all of a sudden they just kind of dwindle into being a little bit toxic and not really, you know, the people I was looking for. Um, I was noticing that, you know, all the money I had saved up when I was solo was disappearing and starting to disappear fast. Um, so I've started to realize like, okay, I don't know how to charge properly. I don't even know where to begin. 
Um, you know, numbers hasn't really been on my, my thing. Honestly, I've always hated math and numbers, um, which you guys are forcing me to do better about. <laughs> forcing, encouraging, <laughs> loving, sorry. tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> like we're, we're just you know if for enough money I will go out to Lindsay with a gun and point it at her and make her like, push the button on her computer and do math and I bring my own abacus it's terrifying. <laughs> Work in progress with the numbers, but again, yeah. I, hopefully you guys are hearing because I I love clients and Lindsay's I don't want to brag too much she's she's a rock star she's kicking butt so I want I don't want anyone to hear her and go oh I couldn't do it I, I mean look she's like I struggle with numbers I this wasn't natural for me. I think a lot of times when people see the next level of the millionaire master plan people and they've got this life that they're like, I want that life. They see that person. Like I can never be there, but they don't see the first person who's had the same fears they did. Like I hired employees and they were toxic, but I didn't want to clean. So I tolerated it and I didn't know what to charge and I started losing money. Just all these fears and stuff. That's super common. So what, um, just cause I'm always curious, how did you find us? What, how did you get connected uh, to our little universe? Um, I think one day I just got on Google and was like, how do I save my business or grow my, like, how do I grow a cleaning business? You know, different wording like that. And uh, you guys popped up pretty close to the top and I just opened it up and I started to kind of feel it. You know what I mean? I started to kind of connect with it. I could see that, you know, like the things that you were doing, the ways that you were coaching, I just comprehended it well. Um, and after, you know, kind of watching and listening, I finally, you know, with seeing those numbers in my bank account disappear, I was like, I need to do something. I'm just going to suck it up and do it. <laughs> do what I hate most and ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> I love that honesty of like, I, you know, because we all want to be like, of course, I'm super humble and I want other people to help and I don't know everything, but that's so not how owners are. We have to have this bullcrap fakey of like, Oh, I know everything I know, but we don't. And just so you guys know, I try to say it loud and often. I've always had a mentor right now. I'm in a $50,000 a year. I think it's more than that 55 or something, uh, mentoring program for me. So again, I would, that would be a red flag to me. If, uh, you were looking with anyone that's like, Oh, I don't need coaching. Like, okay, well, if Tiger Woods, and again, this shows I'm old because I know he's kind of yesterday's news, but if he had a six golf coaches his whole career, we probably as business owners need coaches um, you know, in that state. So what, what was the big fear? I know for a lot of people, and just so you guys, everyone listen out there, anyone that wants to be our client, it ain't cheap. So um, aside from, holy crap, I got to spend a bunch of money on myself um, in my business. There's just what you said, like, what if this guy or gal, what if they don't know? What if he asked me to do something scary, which we do all the time, <laughs> you know, like how did you respond to that first? Actually, I would love to know what was it? What was the first scary thing that we asked you to do that you're like, oh, I didn't know I'd have to do that. And how did you fail or, or succeed? How did you do it? Did you not? How did it feel? Raising prices on my clients. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love that. <laughs> love having people do that. Please walk us through how that felt, how you responded, how it went, the whole thing. Um, well, it was definitely scary. Um, I think after, you know, the more I did it, the more clients I talked to, the more comfortable I got about it. Uh, the beginning was a little rough, um, but I just told myself, just do it. Uh, worst that's going to happen is you're going to learn from it and better, you know, your approach of talking with people and really making sure you're getting the right message across. So what was, because there had to be, um, without getting too deep into mindset coaching, anytime you, you make a change, there's always a belief that you had before which was, you know, you can tell me, but it probably was a negative, fearful, they're going to quit or punch me or hate me or I'm a bad person, you know, some sort of, I'll let you decide, but not a positive. At some point, and again, we helped you, but it wasn't like I didn't come out with a gun and make you do anything. We had words, I said things, you heard them, and then your, your behavior changed. So the easy thing is, well, Mike told me to do it and I did it. It's like, okay, but that's not what really happened. And my, I, I'm guessing we had conversations and your belief went from, if I raise prices, this about me, about them, about what's going to happen to this or not. Or maybe you just said, I knew it was going to go terrible. I just did it because I was afraid Mike would yell at me. What, what <laughs> and that first call made you go before I wouldn't have done it. And now I'm doing it. What kind of clicked in your head? Um, well, the reason I did it was just, if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to continue my business. I had to kind of have that wake up call and realization that, you know, as much as I wanted to do it on the cheaper dollar side for people that in order to help people, I actually needed the money to be able to do it. Um, you know, and the way that I was charging, it didn't cover everything I needed to, to be able to help the people that wanted our help. Um, you know. And the crazy thing is that feeling of, or belief of, I had to do it. I can't be successful. Otherwise, 
that moment that you went from, I'm not going to, I'm too afraid to change, to raise prices to I'm going to raise prices, your business and its ability to succeed with the pricing you had didn't change a nickel, right? Like it's not like anything happened in the world, but Lindsay just went from, yeah, I guess I could and maybe should change. And again, we're not, it's not just about changing prices, whatever it is, start a funnel or do hiring or fire somebody that, you know, a customer or an employee, you know, whatever that scary thing is for you, for Lindsay just happened to be raising prices. Your belief changed. I can't live like this anymore. And it's so funny because nothing outside in your business changed, but the minute Lindsay went from, I'd like to raise prices or I should raise prices or I'd be bad if I raise prices to, I have to, that was what did it. So cleaning nation, whatever your thing is, I would encourage you as quickly as possible to move from, I should, it'd be nice if I could, if only to, if this is important, I got to do it. And if it's not, then I guess I can just do what I want. All right. I love that. Um, all right. So in the program, what was the, your favorite thing you did? So that's like, we went with the most scary thing. What was the thing that you're like, oh my gosh, that was the best that um, people that aren't in our program can go, oh, I'll just steal what Lindsay did and do that. What was the big kind of lever you moved yourself, your business? What was the most important thing that felt good and had big results? And, it, and Lindsay's like, nothing. It was all hard. <laughs> There's the one thing that, that was, came easy to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing's really come easy. Um, a lot of it's gotten me out of my comfort zone and, you know, dabbling on the tech side and the advertising and getting into that, you know, world. Um, just the the hiring of people. I mean, all of it's been hard. Um, it's gotten easier over time. There's still things I'm working on. Um, but I think my favorite part of the program is honestly just realizing how much of the mindset really controls your day to day and the growth of your business or the non growth of your business. Um, so that's probably, I think, been my favorite part that and just the community in general and having, you know, other entrepreneurs in the same going through the same thing, not feeling alone, um, you know, kind of beating off each other, bouncing ideas off each other. It was just great, great community to be a part of. Beautiful. And by the way, thank you for contributing, right? Like, it's so funny, the people that are the most like, man, I got so much from other people in the community that love me and I love them and I connected and we kind of had the same fears and everything like that. The ones that get the most value are typically the ones that contribute. Like Lindsay's always in the group and contributing. So it's just funny how the contributors get the most value and the people that don't want to give. They're like, I'm here. Everyone serve me. Come on, I need help no one ever shows up for. But like when Lindsay says something, everyone's like, oh, it's Lindsay. We love Lindsay, right? And that's why she's on the show. She's just such a great um, example of what a successful client is. So, all right, let's uh, let's switch pages. What's the, I've been, we've been sharing your story. So you, you've been doing this a little while. I, when did we start working together, by the way? We are recording this January, 2021. When did we start working together? I started the Elite program back in August of last year. So, almost six months, five, six months. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And we'll, we'll give you the last two questions. And then if there's anything else you want to add, you can, but the last two questions I've got are one, what is the biggest change in your business? Well, well three biggest change in your business. Um, and that could be money, time, freedom, whatever. Biggest change in you, which I'm, I'm more personally interested in and um, biggest advice from everything that you've learned in August, spending all this time and money and effort growing as an owner, biggest thing you kind of give to Cleaning Nation is, hey, here's here's what I would coach Cleaning Nation slash July Lindsay to do. So let's start with biggest change in your business. Biggest change is probably, hmm, I would say the finance side of it and just having more time for myself and working on the business. Okay, so finance side, meaning more revenue, more profit, less revenue, less profit. More revenue. <laughs> All right. So more revenue and then making more and having more time for yourself and to kind of think and work on the business as opposed to cleaning and all that nonsense. Right. Yeah. The, I, I, should, I didn't ask her this before the thing. So that I'm, I'm setting myself up for failure for, and her up for failure. When's the last time you cleaned? Um, honestly, last week. <laughs> oh, bless America. What on God's earth made you go out and clean last week? Well, I had someone call out. I only have two employees right now. I'm still working on getting more employees. And the girl called out and it was with two people, a five and a half hour house. And I just couldn't leave my one guy in the house that long for by himself. I'm right, too we will talk <laughs> next Thursday. We will get you sorted because you should not be cleaning. All right. Um, 
I knew this was something you weren't going to ask that question. <laughs> I think that, hey, we want honesty, right? Like I, for all of you guys and girls out there, we, these, this could be transformational, but it's not perfect. It's, um, it's a, it can be a two steps forward. Some things you just get and it goes, I shouldn't say something. Some people in some areas just get it and go forward and never look back. Other times it's two steps forward, two steps back. All right, I'm going to give you one chance to redeem yourself or make it even worse. Prior to last week, when was the first, last time you cleaned that? Before that? Before that, it was two months. All right. All right. I'm still, I'm still giving you the, the shaky fist. In progress. I'm working on it. <laughs> See, guys, gals, if you have one takeaway and I'll let Lindsay give hers, but it would be, okay, Lindsay's not perfect. She's steadily moving forward. She's making more money. She got more freedom, but she cleaned last week. And then before that was only two months, right? And I'm going to have you back in six months and you're going to go, oh, please, I'm, I don't even know how to clean anymore. But um, it, it is absolutely progress. Okay. So the big change for you was having more, not complete control, obviously over your business, but more control, making more money. Here's the one I'm interested in. What was the change, the biggest change in Lindsay personally? In me? Um, well, I don't know if you remember, but when I first started the program, I was very, oh my God, go, 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 la, 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 la. And now I'm, I can actually breathe. My shoulders are dropped down. I'm not up like this all the time anymore. Um, you know, I, I just overall just have a better comfort, better, more peace of mind and just having the tools and the knowledge that, you know, I've gained from the program and just from the everyday learning out on the, you know, with the job and everything, I just, the peace of mind and just the the mindset overall that I have about life and the business and, you know, just everything. And I got to kind of getting philosophical here, but I got to tell you, cleaning nation, that is don't sleep on that. Right. A lot of people are like, tell me how you made more money and how much more money and how do I do that? And that's fine. Those are all fine questions, but Typically, when we want to make more money, we don't really want to make more money. We either want things and we don't even want the things. So money's worthless, right? Money can buy a TV. Maybe I want a TV or it can buy a house or a car or an education for my child or I can give to someone else. Those are the things that money can do. But typically, we don't want a TV or to give to anyone else or a house or a car or security. A lot of people think money equals security, which doesn't hurt, but there's other things. Um, typically we don't even want those things. We want how we think we'll feel when we have a TV. I can sit in my comfy couch, which I am looking at my TV, which is off by the way, Lindsay, I'm not watching. <laughs> um, I'll have this car, I'll have this house, I'll have whatever. And then when I have that, I will feel a certain way. Um, I love that Lindsay, you, so again, that's all fine. Money's great. I'm not saying, you know, we should be non for profits. I have a nice house, a nice car and they're great. And I enjoy them very much, but you could start feeling the way you want to feel right now. Where you don't have to necessarily wait until that happens. So I love that as you're doing, you naturally went from tense and scrunchy to it's okay. This is my business. I'm in charge. It's my life. We're just gonna we're just gonna work through it. So I want to encourage all of you guys and gals. Um, certainly, money and success and systems and processes make it a lot easier to feel that way. But they're not required. You could just decide today to feel less stressed out, and uh, it's it's easier said than done, but it's possible. Am I completely Lindsay, am I completely insane, Lindsay? Or have you found that to be true in your experience? Yeah, no, very true. All right, last thing. Uh, what's the big if you? If you could, you are going to speak to Cleaning Nation. What do you want to tell them in terms of if you could just have 20 seconds to sum up the best of the best to speak to old Lindsay who is suffering and dying, if you could help her and then by extension, Cleaning Nation, what's your big like, here's what you'd do or stop doing? Just do it. Just ask for help. Don't be scared. Um, you know, nobody gets through life by themselves. Um, you have to realize that, you know, it, it takes a, a Cleaning Nation. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, the old self, probably I would have said, don't, don't take as long as you did, um, you know, to follow your dream, follow your passion, figure things out and um, do for you. Wise words from a wise 26 year old girl. <laughs> Sorry, I, can't, I, gotta go over. I'm not. I didn't say woman, girl, because you're that young, you know, you're barely, you know, barely even able to vote. Um, I was that young. You're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. And I'm 46. So everyone under 40 is like a child to me. So 25, 35, you're all kids. Um, old man camping here. All right. So just so it doesn't sound super self so And again, Lindsay and I didn't plan any of this stuff. So um, I just want to encourage you guys, if you want more of our community, go to GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. There are podcasts. There's a 10,000 member Facebook group. Um, in the month of February, we're recording this in January. We're only going to take six clients a week. That's it. Um, so we're not necessarily hurting for clients. Um, but for those of you like, eh, I don't care. This guy's not for me. This Lindsay seems, you know, she's too old, whatever the case is. Um, 
please, 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 what Lindsay said still makes perfect sense. You can't do it alone. You need a community. You need systems and processes, ideally a mentor um, and a team of people that love you. If this community is not right, that's okay. We're not right for everybody. Don't use that as an excuse to be like, okay, I guess I'll just go back to the crappy life that I have now. I really want to encourage you to find your community, your team, your mentor, your guy, gal, whatever. They can get you what you want. So that don't give up, do it sooner. Today could be the day, right? Again, if you're like, oh, I like this community. Great. Go to growmycleancompany.com. There's not even any for sale. Just a bunch of free crap. Um, but find a mentor, find a system, find a community. It's, it's truly, truly important. Aside from the, I will make more money, all, all that will be good. Life sucks less, right? When things are it's lonely, right? You, you lose a client. Nobody, your friends don't know what they're talking about. They got a job making 42 grand a year. They get nothing, right? When you, um, an employee stands up, you know, last minute, very hard for you. You don't want to tell your spouse because he's he or she's already sick of hearing about that crap anyway. Um, so find a community of people that can get really excited when you get in, a, you have a funnel working or you get your first automated lead or just stupid stuff. I shouldn't say stupid stuff, but stuff that the world's not going to get. Um, you need a place that you can share that and other people get it. So uh, if you love us, growmycleancompany.com. There's so much stuff there. Podcast, all free, nothing for sale. Uh, if you don't love us, find your home. Lindsay, questions, comments, rude remarks, or are you just going to sign us off, young lady? I'm just going to say, have a great day. <laughs> You're the best, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, T Cleaning Nation. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.